Hey, it's Tom here from Our House Plants, and today we have a care video for the Philodendron Heresium Brazil, and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about caring for this house plant. So I've had mine for a couple of years now. They are honestly so easy, so simple, and they grow in so many different conditions. I, I truly believe that this is one of those house plants that practically anyone can grow. With caveats, obviously, there are some exceptions, but I think generally speaking, anyone could possibly have a go at this and probably do quite well. They are very forgiving, they don't need much fussing, and they will grow in a variety of different conditions. So they're fantastic. They're great for new people who are just starting out to house plants, but they're also good for experienced plant parents as well simply because they are so beautiful. Um, the Philodendron heresium is a species of plants, as you already know, but there's a lot of them to pick from. And quite a few of them have become house plants over the years. And this one is potentially one of the prettier ones, I don't know. Um, there's one about mycans as well, which is really nice. And the original green one is still pretty. It's not anything wrong with it. It's just, this adds a bit more color to it. Um, the difference is, I'll show you some some fish so you can see what I mean, but each leaf has um, a lime green kind of um, stripe in the middle of each leaf, which is it's a bit of variegation. It just makes it look a bit different, a bit nicer. Um, yeah, so I, I think it really sets out and each leaf has the variegation. There are some quirks with what happens to it, which I'll get onto a bit later on, but overall it's a great plant. The variegation is stable. Each leaf should theoretically have the variegation on it. And yeah, it grows fast if you give it the right conditions. And this video, we're going to talk about that now. Okay, so the light needs for this plant are quite interesting. It will cope with a broad range of conditions. If you think of it like a road, so we right in the middle of the road, um, let's call it indirect light, bright indirect light, okay? And then you have a range, you could go towards the curb on the either side of the road, heading towards low light, like complete darkness on one side, and then full sun on the other side. The middle of the road is ideal. That's really what you want to be going for because that's what it's used to, that's what it likes. It's just straight down the middle is absolutely fine. But you can go to either extreme. You can go to lower light conditions, or you can even go to some full sun, and the plant's fine. Um, as a general rule, the more light you can provide, um, the faster growth you're going to get, and the lower light you're going to the conditions you find, you're going to find slower growth. So it depends what you're looking for. If you buy your plant and you don't necessarily want it to get bigger quicker, then it will be fine in the low light location. But if you're after a, a plant that grows and you want something to show off down the line, say you've got a really, really small one to start with, then you're going to give it more light to speed that up. So think of it like that. So middle of the road is, uh, you know, bright, bright and direct light. And then you can go for, towards full sun and also towards low light, whichever suits your needs in the, in the, you know, where you have a space in your home to put this plant, it most likely will be absolutely fine. Just avoid really intense full sunshine, um, south facing windows, avoid them and extremely dark locations with no light whatsoever, avoid those as well. And you are going to be fine. Okay. Watering needs. Um, Generally speaking, with most of my philodendrons, I treat them quite similar. They don't... They can dry out, basically, philodendrons. I'm, I think of all the ones I've owned, I can't think of any that are particularly fussy with that. But you can let them dry out completely, like dry soil. And they're okay with that. You do need... You can't leave them endlessly. They're not succulents. They, they will struggle. So you need to water them again after a couple of days at least. But they can be completely dried out and that's fine. Um, and in fact, I would probably recommend doing it that way. Um, they do ideally want to be moist for most of the time. They like a continuous supply of water, but it's so, so difficult and it's so easy to make mistakes. Um, even people who have been around plants for decades can still mess up with these because too much water leads to root rot and overwatering issues. And it's very easy to accidentally overdo it. So if you are letting the soil dry out completely, you're going to avoid that. 
Um, however, the ideal situation is just barely moist. So if you can, if you're good at it and you know what's going on with your plants, barely moist soil is ideal. Just don't let them be sitting in water. They don't need excessive amounts. They are very easy going as long as you don't overwater them. So just be cautious. So repotting, um, you don't need to do it very often, to be honest. Um, I've repotted mine once and that was enough. The roots, they play nice together. In each, I, I will show you a photo of what it's like inside the pot, but there's actually multiple plants um, in the pot. And that is gonna be true for almost all of these plants you pick up from shops. There are gonna be several um, vines in each uh, container. And they, they play nice together. They don't compete excessively. They don't fill the pot fast. And even when they do, it, they don't really show any signs of, of problems. This, these plants are mainly leaf and vines and stems and their roots are quite, like, not massive. I, I don't know how to describe it, but they're just, they're not very vigorous, I suppose is a better way of looking at it. So they don't need to be repotted often. You're probably going to repot them because the potting medium is broken down and you'll notice it's not holding water or it's just not great. Maybe it's... I don't know, there can be any number of reasons why, but it's most likely the potting medium needs refreshing before you notice there's a problem with the plant. Um, clearly, very young plants in very, very small containers will need potting on to keep them growing because they will reach a point where they just won't grow anymore because the pot's too small. Um, so yeah, you won't need to do it very often. Two to three years is probably enough, maybe even less frequently. But yeah, they're not, they're not, they're, they don't need to be potted often. Um, and when you come to do it, they are quite easy going. Um, most potting mixes you use for your house plants will be fine here. Um, yeah, this is just a coconut core mix, the looks of things. Yes, it is. And that's it, that's fine, it's absolutely perfect. It doesn't need anything crazy. Uh, they don't want really heavy um, soils or really, really open ones. So avoid things like um, succulent mixes, not that you would use that, but they, the looks of stones probably aren't ideal. And really chunky mixes like aeroid mixes might not be the best because the roots aren't particularly, um, like I said, not very vigorous. So they do need some sort of access to the minerals and nutrients, which they wouldn't get on like loads of bark, for example. So just your everyday cop and cop potting compost is probably going to be absolutely perfect. Let's tackle humidity, temperature and feeding. Let's get it all done. Let's do it quick. Okay, so um, temperature. These are warm, loving plants. They like it warm. Um, natively, they can take temperatures up to 35 degrees, which is something Fahrenheit. Um, and the coldest temperature for growth, I believe, I will double check, but I think it's 15 degrees, which is this Fahrenheit. Um, no, any colder than that, if, you, if the temperature drops below 15 degrees, then you'll get no growth. The plant won't grow and over 35 degrees they struggle. But realistically, most people will not have a house or home or property or whatever where the temperature is more than 35 degrees. So middle of the road, daytime temperatures between 15 and 35, somewhere between there is gonna be great. And the plant would like that, so that's temperature. Um, they're not frost hardy, so if, if you put them outside, you're gonna to need to bring them in before the temperature drops. Anywhere close to a frost, get them inside and protected or you will lose them. Um, humidity. I want to say that they like high humidity and I think they probably do like it, but they're not fussy. Um, this plant, not a single brown tip. I say that and you're probably going to see one in the video, but I can't see any. There are no brown tips and I have it in a bizarre location near a radiator, um, which should be naturally dry air, but there's no, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Um, if you are struggling, if you live in a very, very low humidity house, you, you're going to know this because you're going to have trouble with Quite a few of your house plants then you might need to provide something artificial to try and keep it a bit higher give it a boost but in the main a normal humidity range of a normal house i keep saying house but they're not all living in houses but a normal humidity range is going to be fine and um, you don't have to worry about that and then feeding um they're not particularly heavy feeders because although they grow and they can grow quite fast they're not massive leaves they're not huge they're not drawn up massive energy You'll probably be all right, to be honest, um, feeding it once every couple of months. That's probably enough. You could do it a little bit more if you really want to, or even a little bit less isn't going to be a deal breaker. These plants are really easy going and feed is kind of a bonus to them. You, you do need to feed them a little bit though. Don't never, ever, ever feed them. 
don't never ever uh, yeah okay fine but I, I hope you get what I mean um, and that's that so those those three things covered off let's move on to the next one okay propagation is easy um, I'm going to do a separate video about it it's very rewarding it's very straightforward it's very easy to do I will show you how to do that in another video I haven't done it yet but I will change update the summary below and I will put in a link or I'll put it here or whatever so you can have a look um, but definitely give it a go it's yeah it's a great plan to propagate so that's worth trying let's talk about some of the issues and some of the problems that we, you can have with this plant thrips yes absolutely not as common as perhaps on some other plants but I have had one thrip outbreak on these plants it was quite easily dealt with but you need to watch for those they can destroy the plant if you're not careful so keep an eye on things if you see a lot of leaves changing color looking yellow just looking generally sick or sickly I should say then you need to investigate for thrips so look for those um, I haven't had any other problems no mealybugs no scale nothing like that's ever happened so that's always good um, I'm not saying that the plants won't get them but I just don't think it's common and on the website I've got a care article for this and none of my visitors or readers have actually commented saying they've had it either so I just don't think it's particularly common with these plants but I can only talk about my experiences if you have had pest problems let me know I want to be educated I want to learn so put in the comments below let me know what's happened with yours um, yellowing leaves are usually a symptom of overwatering. the odd leaf going yellow is fine don't be concerned but lots of leaves going yellow at once is a sign of overwatering. So you're given too much water. Just check it and see. You'll, you'll know. You'll know if that's what's happened because the soil will be wet. Um, so do check that and that's easily diagnosed. Um, leaves curling could be a sign of thrips, but more likely it's probably a sign of underwatering or overwatering. They can curl a bit. This plant is fine. When they get dehydrated over a long period of time, so they've dried out and it's been days, days, days later, they can curl over a little bit. But otherwise, no, you're not going to run into many issues with these plants, thankfully. So that's it for this video and this plant. Um, it's, it's great, honestly. Like I said at the start, it's good for newbies. It's good for experienced plant parents. This hobby of growing house plants is fun and it's enjoyable. And sometimes people want to challenge. They want to grow house plants which are more difficult, more tricky, and they want to have success from growing these plants which are, are harder to grow. And the Philodendron Brazil just is not one of those plants. It's reliable, it's consistent, it won't let you down in most cases. It just grows and it puts up with a lot and it doesn't make a fuss. And I truly believe that most people will have success with this plant. And sometimes that's what you want. You know, you've had your failure, you've tried to grow a plant from a, a seed or cutting and it's not worked. And it's just nice to have a houseplant in your care that you know, that tells you that you're not useless. You know, it's good. It really is a good houseplant to have. Definitely recommend it. And it's not expensive either. You should be able to get one quite cheaply. Um, I hope this video has helped you. And if it hasn't, let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Honestly, I do value you your time and I do value you tuning in to, to watch my ramblings. But yeah, that's great. Have a great afternoon, good morning or wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you in the next video.